Excellent. Paddy, can you hear us before we start? Thanks. Thank you. Um, ladies, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Strategic Overview and Scrutiny Committee on the 8th of December 2022. Um, we'll go straight into the agenda. Um, Jane, do we have any apologies? Thank you, Chair. Yes, we have received apologies from Councillors Waller, Baines, Boole, Lambert, and we have received apologies from Peter French, uh, one of the co-opted members. However, we have Councillor McCartney attending on behalf of Councillor Waller and Councillor P. Brown attending on behalf of Councillor Lambert. Thank you and welcome to the substitutes. Um, item two, record and minutes of the last meeting of September, November the 17th, 2022. They have all been circulated. Are there any comments or amends before we put that to the vote? No. No, only those. Um, I don't know how many here were here last time. Were you here last time there? Andrew, yes, were you we, here? We are corporate. We are. Thank you. Of those that were here last time, please can I have a proposer. And please could I have a seconder? So that's Andrew Brown proposing and Leah as our um, seconder. All those in favour? Um, um, any abstentions? Please abstain if you're not here. Um, you can abstain because you weren't here. So that's unanimous. There's nobody against, I assume. Thank you. Um, agenda item three, actions arising from the last meeting. Uh, point one, it was agreed that a review of the council's tax support scheme would be undertaken for the financial year, um, which is with Penny, so, uh, which is with SAV. So I believe that will be in hand. And it was agreed that strategic director for resources would discuss with human resources the collation of data from staff ex interviews. Again, that is in hand. I've subsequently seen an email from the chief executive supporting, supporting that. Um, point four, do we have any declarations of interest? Um, I have to declare a non pecuniary interest which will not affect my ability to enter the debate. My wife is a tenant at the King Centre. No other declaration of interest, thank you. Uh, Jane, any petitions, deputations and questions? None received, Chair. Thank you. Questions with notice from members? None received, Chair. Notices of motion from members? None received, Chair. Consideration of any matter referred to the committee in relation to the calling of a decision? No call-ins received, Chair. Thank you very much. Um, agenda item nine, portfolio holders update. I would like to hand over to Councillor Samantha Harvey, portfolio holder of wealth, wellbeing and adult care for a brief update regarding Rutland's public health services. Over to you, Sam. Thanks very much, Chair. Um, Jane's going to share, I've just got a few slides for you. Jane's going to share her screen for us. Thank you. Next slide, please. Um, so when I, oh, the brief from this was that um, Scrutiny would like a briefing on the budget and whether it was value for money. Um, the budget is actually quite extensive and is very, very varied. So what, what I thought would, it would be worth doing was giving some numbers, but also pulling out some specifics um, and it, it would give uh, the panel um, knowledge that if they if they sought further um, evidence or wanted further papers, we could bring a paper back to you. So as you can see, the total budget for this financial year was one thousand one million four hundred seven thousand. Of that, uh, one million three hundred sixty five nine hundred thirty three came from the public health grant. Um, the rest was um, drawn down from the public health ring faced reserves. Um, Notably, it, it kind of sells from the underspend um, from last year and the year before that came about through uh, the reduction of services due to COVID. 
face-to-face -face services obviously were directly affected by COVID. Um, so just to pull some of them out, as you can see, the largest is for the children and young people's budget. Um, uh, that includes, if we go, sorry, we go to the next slide. The allocation split into three, um, three parts. The statutory services, there's core services and there's miscellaneous. Um, some of the things, as you can see, split into both um, and can split over both things. Um, the scores, core services do not have an in individual statutory duty assigned to them, but the over, overall statutory duty on public health is to take appropriate steps to improve the health of people who live in their areas. It entails providing sufficient services and activity to tackle the big lifestyle dr drivers of ill health. And the miscellaneous are discretionary and support services that are well placed to improve public health outcomes. So for things like the children and young peoples, um, that includes the 0 to 11 service, but also includes things like child health visitors, breastfeeding advice, um, and also things like the children looked after health assess assessments come out of public health budgets. So it's a very mixed bag of what actually comes out of this budget. Um, the other thing, obviously, is the sexual health. Um, that, so the sexual health includes the local government responsibilities for commissioning most sexual health services and interventions. It instructs local authorities to commission confidential open access service for sexually transmitted infections of contraception, as well as reasonable access to all methods of contraception and advice on preventing un unintended pregnancy. So it includes things like um, young people's sexual health, teenage pregnancy services, outreach, HIV prevention, usual STI um, testing, including chlamydia and HIV. Contraception, it also includes implants and interuterine inter contraception, um, which is done by our GP practices. And that includes all prescription or prescribing <coughs> costs attached to that. So that's an interesting thing that people sometimes wouldn't necessarily do. Again, comes out of public health budget. Um, and then it also includes all aspects of um, psychosexual health, sexual counselling that go along with all the services. Um, we jointly commission with Leicestershire and Leicester City at the moment, but that those current arrangements are due to end in April 24. A detailed paper is coming to Cabinet in January, looking at future, future options after the pu public consultation that did take place in the summer. I would advise all members to really look at that paper. It is a really interesting paper coming on top of, of that public consultation and highlight some of the issues, but there will be recommendations coming forward on that. Um, dental, which I know is important to the committee. Currently, the epidemiology survey, survey is the statutory function. That's the one that looks at um, the five-year survey in schools. It has been complete completed. Um, and interestingly, we don't have enough schools to sample. The government says a minimum of 20. We only have 17 in Rutland, two of which don't take part. Um, but we were able to sample the number, the minimum number of children. The minimum the government says is 250. We managed 253, which was actually really good based on the fact we don't have the number of schools. Um, oral health prevention falls under core, um, under the core responsibility that includes things like information campaigns, supervised brushing and free supplies where appropriate. So they will give out toothbrushes and toothpaste if, if needed. Um, I'll come back to fluoridation because you wanted an update on that later on. Can we have the next slide, please? Um, what I thought would be um, good was to pull out some of the um, spotlight some of the miscellaneous things that we we cover within the budget so as we can see the public health budget does cover the um, home improvement home checks that are done by Longhurst um, which obviously goes through um, to our, our JH our joint health strategy as well so you can I've what I've done is shown where they contribute to those chapters um, so last Last year, 
referrals and 934 outcomes on that. Um, that is a well-loved service by people. Can we have our next slide, please? The next one was sustainable transport. So it also contributes to the uh, sustainable transport officer for the county. The budget um, that's put forward from public health is 12,400. Um, I thought this one was interesting. Again, it might be things members didn't realize came from the public health budget, things like the bikeability for schools, um, the coordination of mode shift stars, which is for the um, schools to grain accreditation. Um, inactive and sustainable transport initiatives. There's other work around that as well. And then interestingly, the My Bike Scheme, which um, is the initiative with Stock and Prison also comes out of that, which I thought was really interesting. Um, and finally, our final slide, please. Um, the other one is a lot of the budget goes on the Active Rutland Hub. Again, I, I thought that might be something members weren't quite aware of, that the money comes out of public health for that. Um, it does cut across um lots of our chapters and um it reports back on those four things four things from the rutland um the active rutland physical activity and sports strategy and i'm afraid oh no my notes have worked here on the thing sorry so the exercise um on uh, get active one thing it does is the uh, exercise referral scheme to our GPs. Obviously, that service was affected greatly by uh, COVID, as you can imagine. So last year, we, um, there was only 156 client, uh, clients referred through the scheme. Um, if we looked at pre-COVID numbers, which I went back to to 2019, there was 544. So obviously, this year, we'll be looking for that to come back up. Now, access to GP serv ser services has increased and also things have reopened again. Um, on number two, stay inactive. Again, one thing um, that this helped towards was the Rutland Walking and Cycling Festival, uh, which members might know about. There was 300 people participating in 34 sessions over that. Um, active places includes things like facilities and playing pitches. And part of the work includes influencing on planning, planning policy and developer contributions, funding, and where that should go. And then active economy, includes engaging with the local work economy. Um, one example is the wellbeing at work stream that's run through the RCC that comes through that. Um, that was the end of my slides. Um, coming back to uh, fluoridation, and I know it was something that I was specifically asked to comment on. Um, there's two parts. The fluoride varnish is built into the dental contract um, and it's usually done in early teenage years. And that's when um, our young people go to the dentist and have a coating put on their teeth in early teenage years. Um, the other um, question that was asked was about fluoridation in water. Um, and it is slightly more complicated. It previously did fall under the remit of Public Health England and the local authority. However, it's only recently been moved back into the Department of Health, probably because it is quite a polarizing um, issue. Um, within Rutland, we currently don't have fluoride added to our water. Um, the oral needs health assessment chapter is coming, um, it's currently being undertaken in, is due at the March Health and Wellbeing Board. The steer to public health was to uh, do their recommendations on health, on their health perspective of it, rather than look at the political thing. So um, within the assessment, um, they will make recommendations around fluoridation in water based on the uh, health evidence, um, not the uh, little p political argument, shall we say, and the local argument, which can be done following on from those recommendations. Thank you. I'll open you up to questions. Questions, uh, Mr. Ainsley. Thank you, Councillor Harvey. Um, I have a series of questions, all of which seem a little bit disjointed, but I was trying to keep up with your slides, so I apologise in advance. Um, on slide one, you mentioned housing of £104,800. I just wonder if you provide a little more detail on that. What are we actually providing? Um, you don't have to answer now. If you don't have it with you, that's fine. I can I can do a um, probably best is if if you want a full breakdown, I'll come back with that. That'd be useful actually. I just it, it, well, two things bother me. One, it doesn't seem a terribly high amount, 
And secondly, what are we spending it on if it's such a small focused amount? So that's really where I'm coming from, I think. Um, the other one is something I'm a little uncomfortable talking about, but it, my, my good lady wife works at Peterborough Hospital in, in the neonatal intensive care unit. And um, there I know they have a huge breastfeeding program giving advice to mothers, etc. And I know that the uh, in-community midwives also do sessions. So what is it that RCC is providing over and above those services? Um, we're paying for the community. You're session. paying for the community midwives yes. to go out and visit everybody, yes. are we? Yeah. So the NHS doesn't pay for that? No. Thank you. Um, and the other, so I will finish shortly. Uh, home improvement, what was that one? That was in, uh, one, one of your slides, slide two, I think. Um, yes, that's within the, um, it falls under that, it will fall under housing. It falls under the homeless, um, homeless thing. We, um, Longhurst, um, we commission Longhurst to do home improvements um, and, so this would be things like insulation, that kind of thing? No, um, that's, that's separate. They do... OK, the, so what are we doing? The worker... I have got that. Hold on just a second, and I will read it out. So the housing MOT is a home check service delivered to anyone living in Rutland, providing information, advice and support to help maintain independence and live, live as safely as possible in your own home. At the home visit, an assessment of the property and individual needs will be undertaken, helping to provide specific information advice. This may include general way well-being and how you're man managing, alternative housing options, falls prevention, general house conditions, minor and major adaptions, assistive technology, minor handy person works, warm home, energy advice and support. Yes and the elig eligibility for welfare benefits. So basically it's a grant, um, we match, it's match fund by uh, 35,000 from Better Care Fund, and then we commission the whole service. Okay. So the commissioning of that service, um, it's done through our commission. So, so, since, so it's putting in things like grab handles on the shower and going up the stairs, the additional, all that kind of things for as you get more info. Okay, thank yep. you very much. And last but not least, Sustainable transport. What on earth are we meddling in sustainable transport for when we are actually children, young adults, and health? Um, so it, we contribute to the sustainable transport office at time, delivering a range of active and, and sustainable transport initiatives. So this is part of the wider remit that says that getting active um, is better, better for people's health. But it's particularly so sustainable. That's the bit that got me. If you're saying improved transport provision, I can understand that. But you're saying that this is a grant particularly for sustainable. Um, it's called the Sustainable Transport Scheme. That's, that's just a handle that somebody's lapped on, locked onto it, is it? That's what we um, that's what we call it within the local authority. But it's not necessarily transport. sustainable. It's just transport to help you get out and about and be more active. Is it that... does. Well, what... It delivers a range of active and sustainable transport initiatives. If I could um, bring in Councillor Stevenson, who Thank used you. to be that cover that in her portfolio. Yeah, I think it's referring to um, getting children to walk to school, cycling and that sort of thing. And obviously it's got the added advantage of there's uh, some climate change impact, positive impacts as well, because you haven't got the emissions and the car journeys. OK, thank you. I think Penny would like to come in at this point. Um, yes, if it's helpful. Oh, yes. Can you hear me? Can you hear me okay? Penny, can you hear Sorry. us now? Yeah, I can hear you. Sorry, slight technical hitch. Can you hear me okay in there? Can you hear, can you hear me? for Penny. I, I misspoke. I have actually got one further question, if that's okay. Um, turning on to the point of fluoridization, I was shocked when we did the dental bit when we were briefed about the amount of cavities in children in the zero to fives. I, I believe it's something like 50% of the zero to fives presenting and some kind of dental work needed to be carried out. So it, it seems to me that fluoridization is very important. Has that debate started about fluoridization? Has it been brought into the public arena? Is this something that we are actively pursuing, fluoridization of the water, given the benefits and the state of our children's teeth? I think um, 
it's, it's worth noting it's not as easy or as um, because Rutland Rutland water we couldn't just fluoride Rutland water per se because um, it would be a regional thing or a certainly we would have to bring in other areas um, so it's not probably a decision that could just be made by um, Rutland County Council per se um, public health as I said public health have been um, of, of, I ask them to give them their medical view on it. Um, quite simply put, it's a very polarizing issue um, because some people are fundamentally against it. And um, it, it is something that would need to have a public debate um, around, around it. There's certainly evidence that it does support it. And we know that our cavalry rates within Rutland haven't improved for a decade. Um, I'm not sure there is much as 50%, they certainly were around 30%. That's a substantial number, wasn't it? Um, I think it's around 34% of parts of Oakham particularly. Um, so it is something, it's certainly it's something, and I'm hoping that any recommendations that come through in the oral needs assessment, JSNA, will um, enable conversations to start. And certainly they will help um, and, they will help us um, lobby the Department of Health, which is how 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 we now proceed to do it. However, I, I would I don't want to kind of preempt what might come in the JSNA, um, but certainly in other parts of the country, such as Birmingham, where uh, fluoridation has has happened for quite some number of years, um, it's had a dramatic effect on their under fives um, dental decay rate. Um, we seem to have done tried everything and our rates remain a problem um so thank you for that. that's exactly my point i think that um, our rates remain a problem and are we actually speaking to people about a possible solution that's all i want to say. thank you um has anybody else on the panel got questions before i put my oar in um councillor andrew brown uh, thank you chairman um just on slide two that there, there was the word visions i just wondered if that was a typo it should have been vision as in sight? Uh, it children's centre, the Visions Children's Centre. Right, okay. Um, I, I can clarify slightly, we pay towards, um, we pay towards a worker, I think. Um, thank you. I've got a question on Visions actually, so is it probably pertinent okay. if I just carry on with Visions while we've got it? My question for you, Sam, and it's probably, I, I don't expect to know the answer now, but um, obviously, Visions is something that was put in place uh, two or three years ago with some contention, um, but I certainly voted for it. Do we have any idea what the performance of Visions has been against its original um, objectives in terms of users and outcomes? And what are the future plans for Visions? Um, I have to say that uh, Visions and the Children's Centre comes under um, children. So I will, it, it does, I'm afraid, uh, the public health spend into Visions, uh, 12,000 pounds of the grant goes in. Um, uh, and it offers, we know Vision, the Children's Centre offer universal sessions and service that have a particular area of focus. They, and they deliver services across the county, including to the two military bases. I would say, I, I would recommend um, probably asking for that information from um, Councillor Wilby. Um, Thank you. As the, Jane, I, something we could request, I don't necessarily want to drag him to scrutiny, but just a, an update on visions for the panel, if everybody's agreement. Thank you. Sorry, Councillor Paul Brown. Uh, yes, thank you, Jim. Um, on your first slide, you had a, um, a, a core column with call you, underneath that you had that smoking and tobacco um is this just trying to persuade people against smoking and and on how much we're spending on it and what are we doing uh we are i can't see for looking apologies there it is um it's twenty one thousand. Uh, yes, I'm, I, I think that is the smoking cessation service um, that we uh, pay, that pays towards, so it would pay towards uh, smoking cessation advice and also um, products. So how is that administered? 
It, it will be um, contracted. So it will be, we will have a contract. Um, I will have to double check who the contract's with, but we will, we will have a contract for smoking cessation services. Um, it's, it's one of the number, um, it's, it's one of the top kind of five um, causes of ill health. Um, so uh, rightly public health will try and prevent um, people from smoking. And that includes helping people give up smoking. Can I quickly come in on that, if I may? Um, uh, uh, Citizens Advice Rutland last year actually were given a bucket of money to go and actually provide cessation services as well as alcohol abuse services. So um, I don't know whether that's still valid, but that's certainly true 12 months ago. Um, our um, substance misuse service is um, currently turning point and that's contracted separately. Uh, Sam, on that on that subject, do we have any numbers on successful outcomes on the money spent for substance misuse, smoking abuse, etc.? Again, you might not have it with you, but it'd be good to know what return on investment we get in terms of human lives, if nothing else. I'm afraid I don't. I I can I can bring that. I'll send those figures back. Thank you. Do we have any other questions? I have one more, but I'll, I'll go. Uh, Abigail, thank you. Thanks, Nick. Uh, there's a quick one. The Active Hub Rutland had 108,000 and 20,000 from schools. Could you just go into that a little bit more? Is it, do the schools use the Active Hub Rutland as a, a venue for PE? What's um, Active Rutland is the physical activity development team from RCC. They bring together physical activity partners, promote and develop local opportunities and help people of all ages um, to get into physical activity. Um, they deliver, it's been guided through the Active Rutland physical activity sports strategy from 2017 to 2021. Um, basically, they have a similar relationship with Active Together of the Leicestershire districts. Um, Public health grant funding is the largest income source for Active Rutland, alongside the school contributions of 18,000, and then the holiday activity and food program. Most of the total budget covers staffing, along with an 18 and a 400,000 pound contribution to Active Together and 7,000 for the exercise referral. Um, they, there's, there is quite a lot of this. So the, uh, the delivery of in programs, um, they implement um, the early years and the key stage one intervention program across all schools, LLR whole school approach and daily MAR principles. They work with partners to develop opportunities um, to participate in physical activity and support. And they ensure that health and physical activity organizations work together to develop appropriate pathways, targeting those whose health will benefit. They also, um, things like the exercise referral screen slips into that. So I guess what I was getting at was that, and part of the cost saving measures, the Active Hub Rutland was something that was listed. And I wondered whether, the, yeah, I just wondered, what, I don't know enough about what we spend on it and what it brings and whether, you know, if, if cuts were made there, whether the ripples might go out to more schools than I was perhaps aware of. Um, I think I think it does. I don't know whether <clears throat> Councillor so Stevenson. That was it, just. It would have it would have fitted again. It would have fitted in the Councillor Stevenson's leisure contract previously, so she might well be able to offer more information than me. Or oh, don't know more information. I I can um, say that when I was teaching in one of our primary schools, one of their big things was the sports ambassador program, which was about running events to encourage all children to take part and enjoy taking part and also making sure the secondary school children were often leading those activities. In terms of the last part of your question about ripple effects, I think that's something that, he, that warrants being taken away and that we can look at that. So you have a full understanding when we're looking at the rest of the budgeting process. I'm looking at the finance portfolio holder for a nod. <laughs> I, I think it, it, it's quite an extensive piece of work that they do out of um, Active Rutland. Um, so I, I would think if, if members wanted more information, it, it would possibly be worth um, 
asking uh, public health colleagues and active colleagues to um, come and, and um, kind of present far more detail on that if, if you were so interested. Well, it's just interesting, I mean, particularly with the well, agenda item 11, the asset review strategies that, you know, Oakham Enterprise Park, where the active hub, hub Rutland is, might see some changes, improvements, I don't know. And it's just wondered whether, you know, if we have a, a if we, you know, if we, it, I'm just interested in how this this element of the public health budget is spent and what what the effects would be of a change to that part of the budget. That's 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 all I'm getting. Abby, can I suggest if we're talking about the future of that, we leave that to potentially exempt? Yeah. No, yeah, you did. You did. Well, well, tip <laughs> Um uh, Yeah, I, I, it's it's worth it's worth noting that um, they work across. Um, the, all schools um, and school sport and um, so probably it well obviously if, if scrutiny wanted further details on on what they actually deliver um, we can bring that um, before Penny comes in because I want to I, my question was relating to what Abby was saying so if I get asked my question then Penny can maybe infer on all of it um, again on the active hub um, I noticed a budget of 108,000 is that 108,000 which comes from public health that's not the full active hub um budget no the full active the hundred and eight thousand is from public health and on what i have because obviously i was tasked with just looking at the public health health budget on this they um there was some i i don't know whether our finance portfolio would have any further information on um from what i have is that it's 108,000, um and then there's the two contributions on top of that which would be the eighteen thousand and the eight thousand. again i can bring that further okay. back I, th I think my question is and again it's probably to take away for the for karen to have a look at is um what is the net contribution of active rutland because obviously there is all the income that comes from the gym the judo the walking football etc and understanding what the what the budget is how much of that comes out of our funds how much of that is funded from third parties like public health and then what is the net contribution of that um along with the outcomes so again i don't necessarily want to drag people to scrutiny but a quick summary of this is what we get in this is what we spend this is where it comes from and this is the outcomes yes chair i've got it thank you penny if we can hear you can you hear me no we can't no you can't <laughs> Um, I don't know what's going on. Uh, right, sorry. Um, Bear with me, we're sending Jane into the cupboard, Penny. So while we're waiting for that, Sam, can I ask you just one more question? Um, of the face-to-face -face services, how many of them are delivered in Rutland? Are they all delivered in Rutland? Um, yes, where where face-to-face um, -face service um, can be, it is delivered. Within. So all the face-to-faces in Rutland? Cool. I say all. Um, can I caveat one, one thing around the sexual health services, though? Um, because obviously um, during COVID, sexual, um, some direct sexual health services um, were close. So those running from Rutland Memorial Service. Uh, but but were, in, in, in a normal day, they would be. In, in a normal day, yeah. services are, are delivered within Rutland, but yes. Thank you. Penny, do you want to try speaking again? Yeah, can you hear me? No. Sorry, Penny, we can see your lips moving, but there's no sound. Yeah, yeah. I, tells me you're unmuted, but is your volume switched on on your computer? Bits of paper written on, hold them up. <laughs> yeah, send the message. He should have set it up. Andrew, are you watching?
Chair, is it helpful if I read out what uh, Penny sent me about the sustainable travel? Yes, absolutely. Just to fill in a little bit yes. of time. Um, yep, so she's put, um, I was going to add sustainable travel role promotes safe routes to school, fulfills government requirement to promote and develop sustainable modes of traffic strategy, proactive promotion of cycling walking, including bikeability. And there's a good news story there in that um, virtually all of our schools in Rutland are participating. Um, we are finding that very helpful when we're getting traffic issues um, brought up such as the perennial parking problems etc so it's a positive impact that has come out from the mode shift styles as well. Thank you. Does that answer your question Councillor Ainsley? Hi Penny, do you just want to try speaking to us? Yeah can you hear me? No? <laughs> I'm trying the phone. <laughs> Did you hear that, Penny? You're actually coming through on the broadcast, but not coming through in the council chamber. We have a slight technical issue. <laughs> Don't know how I feel about that. Sam, thank you very much for that. Um, I know you're not feeling the best, so obviously if you don't want to hang around and listen to the excitement that's to come. Thank you. Please go and put your feet up. Thank you. Are you staying? You trooper. <laughs> okay, um, without Penny, we'll then move on to item 10, which is exclusion of public and press. We did discuss this at the pre-meet, and where possible, we'd like to have kept this um, as open session. I have subsequently spoken to the monitoring officer, and a lot of what is going to be spoken about outside of just the figures is commercially sensitive and is not in the best interests of the of the council so um it is my belief that we should go to exempt but that is a vote so it's up to the panel so can i have a vote for who would allow us to go into exempt please yes proposer. a proposer do i need to propose going into yes, exempt fine. proposer thank seconder you. thank you um all those in favor that's unanimous. That's, that's unanimous so we can go into exempt thank you Why have I not done this six years? It's also a house. Okay. Yeah. Does it? Why did you do that? Why did you do that? Oh, it's me. Yeah. Oh, the change in the world. Where did we go? When you. That means stop. It's definitely. Sorry, welcome, welcome back, public. Um, we now move on to um, item 12, group and panel updates. Um, first one is cultural and asset review. Um, Councillor Walters cannot be with us this evening, um, so I will give you a brief update. We met, had our first meeting last week or the week before last. We met with Robert Clayton in the museum and had a, um, a very constructive tour and, and discussion. Um, the upshot of that was 
we felt the brief was too narrow and we wanted to look at cultural assets in the, in the whole because we believe there is significant synergy between the castle and the museum, for example, and we also mentioned the library. So we, we widened the remit slightly and then we went away with various actions from that. Um, I am requesting, um, I have not requested yet, but I will be requesting off finance and of Robert um, a number of aspects rela relating to the commercial aspects of culture such as visitors income targets etc for both for both of the properties um, Gail is going to approach interest groups including but not limited to the friends of the museum and the historical society etc to find out what their their usages and future requirements um, Alan is going to approach potential partners to include but not include the Agricultural Society, Trevor Ellis, Arts for Rutland, etc., to look at how those partnerships can work in the future. Um, and Edward is going to be, if not already, been asked to investigate how to improve the educational aspects of the offer, speaking to local schools, Leicester University, etc., to consider um, how best we can optimise the educational use of that facility because. If you haven't been there, um, I suggest you have a look. Some of the some of the stuff there is fantastic, and um, the amount of information that's held, particularly in the reference section, um, is um, is pretty is pretty unique. So we need need to make sure we maximise um, that. Um, so we are now putting that all the information together to try and meet before Christmas. We hope in order to take that to the next stage. So we'll report back on the next meeting. Um, second on the list is the um, customer experience. Um, just give an update of what's happened so far. Um, I've had initial conversations with Karen and Natalie with Angela to make sure that we are dovetailing with the human engine. Um, I met with Andy Nix and his team um, early last week. Um, in fact, it might even be this week to to go through the the operation just to try and get a sense of how it works currently. Some of the issues, what's been tried, what's not been tried, what's working, what's not, and what information is available. I sent a list of data requirements to Andy, and he's come back to me today saying he's been a bit busy, but he will try and get those to me next week. Um, in the interim period, for those on the social circulation list, so it won't have gone to say to substitutes. I did send round a scoping document about how I want to approach the project and what's going to be included. Um, I'd like to open it up to see if there's any comments on that for those that have read it, and if not, to get approval um, from the panel to go forward on that on that basis. And then to ask for uh, any volunteers who would like to join me on this roller coaster journey. Any comments on the scoping that I sent round to those that have had it? Start tonight. I mean, I thought it was a good initial starting point. It's obviously a living document, so I'm sure it's evolved with the project. So that's great. It's a good start. <clears throat> Thank you. So if we are all all happy, I'd like to propose that. Can we just second that? Excuse me, Chair. Has the document, the scoping document, been shared with officers yet? How long do I send it to? Do I need to share with officers first? Okay, I will now share that. Now you've agreed it with officers, and then we can, um, if you can delegate the fact that I, it is agreed on the fact that if officers agree that it's also happy with it. Otherwise, I will bring it back. Is that okay, Jane? Is that okay? Do it that way. Thank you. Um, Could I also have a look at it? Indeed, you can. You. Sorry, I thought I'd send it wider. Obviously not. Could I then also ask, you don't have to be panel members currently who would like to potentially be involved in this project with me. Do I have any volunteers or am I running this solo? Um, as far as we're aware, only Ken has volunteered. Ken is not here to re-volunteer himself, but I'm volunteering him on my behalf. We did have Councillor Toesland down as a member. I think I, I won't be able to, to manage it at the moment with everything going on. Okay, I will I will open that up once I get to sign off from the officers with the wider group of members to see if we can bring some non-panel members into that discussion. If I can't get support, we will have to park that project. Um, highways and speeding is Ken. Ken unfortunately can't be with Karen.
Sorry, Chair. Um, the scope for the um, work that um, Human Engine are doing was also circulated today. I yes, sorry, I, I didn't have a chance. Andrew pointed out to me. I've not had a chance. I've not even opened the email yet, but I okay. will. It's quite it's quite comprehensive. Yeah. So, yes, any comments? I will review that and come back. Yeah. Maybe I'll liaise with, with you and then between us, we can agree the scope of Thank you. the project. Yeah, that'd be good. Thanks. Thank you. Um, sorry, Chair. Was that the highways and speeding scoping document? No. Sorry, no. Um, highways and speeding. Um, Ken unfortunately can't be with us tonight. He's handing out some awards for the fire authority. So he has given his apologies. We will get an update at the next meeting. Um, homelessness evidence panel, I believe um, Jane is coming to the next meeting for an update, no? No, apologies, Chair. Um, there's been a change of circumstances and the report um, has been pulled from the next meeting. There is actually a meeting of the homelessness evidence panel next week to go through the report with officers. There were certain items that needed clarifying. OK, so I, I believe Councillor Waller will better give us an update of where we are for the next meeting. Thank you. And then we come on to economic development strategy, devolution and levelling up. Um, please take the floor, Councillor Andrew Brown. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, we had a, a meeting of this uh, economic strategy task and finish group on Monday at uh, five o'clock. Um, and the purpose is to hear the emerging evidence base um, to, to underpin the, uh, the strategy. The Council's economic strategy expired in 2021. And the process was started uh, in early 2022 to start a new economic strategy, and then COVID happened. So the new deadline for the new uh, economic draft strategy is the 31st of March 2023. Um, so we had a, uh, a a briefing from a firm called Metro Dynamics, um, during which the following points were discussed. Um, all the, the statistics they used were from the Office of National Statistics. Um, so they are verifiable. Um, the, um, they used the data from the 2011 census. So uh, some of that is actually actually quite old. I and mean, some of the interesting points came out that uh, Rutland has a, a much greater percentage of houses with four or more bedrooms than the national average. Um, We've got very poor economic growth in Rutland, bottom 10 of all local authorities. Um, the economy in Rutland in 2020 was worth 706 million. So um, that was quite interesting to learn that. Um, there is actually a net inflow of workers into Rutland, despite what some members of the public seem to think, that everyone sleeps here and just disappears to work somewhere else. That is not strictly true. Um, we've actually got very poor social mobility here in Rutland as well. So the poor people stay poor and the rich people stay rich and never the twain shall meet at the minute. And we've actually got 2,381 veterans in Rutland, which I'm sure Councillor Ainsley knows all about. I know them all individually. I'm sure. And uh, the, uh, I, I didn't realise this, but a veteran is actually defined as anyone over the age of 16 who's served in the armed forces. So the word veteran is perhaps not the right word to use in those circumstances because some of them are actually uh, actually quite young. Um, some of the things that came out of the meeting that is that we need to be better in attracting businesses to the area to provide sustainable business accommodation, to provide suitable housing for people to live in the area and to change people's perceptions of and uh, especially those in central government. A um, couple of the action points um, details of the calculations used by um, Better Dynamics to determine the gross value added figures are going to be circulated to the uh, to the members of the group, and they're also going to look at the um, data for Melton Borough Council on on how they um, how they've got employment space, uh, obviously because they're quite close to us and 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 have uh, have, have built quite a lot of employment space uh, up in Melton and how that compares with uh, with Rutland County Council. So uh, I believe we're going to have another meeting probably early in the new year to, um, to, to, to pull these things together and see what, um, what actions we need to take. 
Thank you, Andrew. Any questions from anybody on any of those, those subjects? Thank you. Um, item 13, review of form of plan and annual work plan. The work plan has been circulated as part of the minutes and obviously and governance circulate the forward plan um, every, every week. Have we got? Two weeks. Two weeks. Ooh, okay, every two weeks it gets circulated. Yes, sorry, every two weeks. I'm just checking, I'm just because I think I read it every two weeks to approve it to go out, but I'm just ah, now just checking. The secret one goes out every other week you don't know about. <laughs> 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 so, anybody, any comments on the actual and the secret forward plan? <laughs> um, I've just got one question. This is probably for Karen. This is this again, please don't think I'm being difficult. Um, We've got one scrutiny meeting in, I think, the 26th of January to review where the budget is on the agenda. I have a concern whether or not, because we used to do that over two sessions, whether or not one session is enough to be able to review the whole budget. Um, I would think it would be a very long session if you did it on one session. I, I personally would recommend two sessions. Well, that um, was going to be but, my thoughts. Yeah. The, the, it was originally split over three scrutiny groups, so I think that's why we did it in two sessions before bringing those scrutiny groups together. So I think, think it's really up to you, Chair. Sorry, Jane's got... I can say. confirm it was the same budget report that went to all three scrutinies. Yeah, so but we yeah. did it in two sessions. I was yeah. going to say it was definitely two children's and adults yeah. joined in together and then... Yeah, you would yes. look at your own particular yeah. area. It was just, it was just a thought. Um, and again, I'll open up the panel. I'm not going to create me for meeting's sake, but I just know when we used to have two, they were both three full agendas on specific subjects. Abby, thanks, mate. Uh, Councillor Wallace sent me with a specific note to, uh, to question the date of the next meeting and whether that did in, me, <coughs> did in fact need to be split into two meetings. To allow for our adequate it's a great hive people. mind. Yeah, you've got the monitoring officer hand up. Monitoring officer. Thank you, Chair. Um, I would suggest that the appropriate course of action is to have the one meeting um, with the intention of concluding the business on that evening. And if it's not possible within the two hour, two and a half hours plus fifteen plus fifteen, then of course it would have to be adjourned. But that would be the that would be in extremis because we we are obviously working to a tight deadline. I get that. I better think we would have put the first one before it. I would have thought. I don't. I, I don't think that's possible, Chair. Okay. The apologies, Chair. I mean, what we could do is because the papers and all the budget are published a week before the meeting. If any councillor has any questions, they can submit them to governance, so that we can give you the answers in the meeting itself, mm. just just to speed things up. If we are unable to answer any questions within that meeting, then of course we will provide written answers afterwards. <clears throat> okay. Can I make a suggestion then that when the papers are circulated, a strong recommendation is that specific questions, particularly questioning detail, are circulated um, in advance to try and save time. And again, I don't, Jane, it's totally, I'm gonna to ask you this question, Monty, of whether or not it's appropriate to, because of such tight deadlines, whether or not we put in a emergency date to carry on the conversation, no? I'm just concerned if we don't finish it, will we get, when will we get the next it, It's imperative that it's, it's concluded in one session. Okay, so the answer is we have to do it in one session. Could I politely ask what that imperative is? It, it's, the, it's the budget um, timetable. As, as I say, in extremis, the meeting would have to be adjourned. Um, but my strong, uh, my strong recommendation to you is to, is to set out with the intention that the business is concluded on, on the night, even if that requires um, um, suspending standing orders for the, for the purpose of, of doing so. Well, it's, we, we will have to go with, we will have to go with that. I just know there's going to be a long meeting. Um, again, what we used to, what we do with planning is move it forward to six o'clock. Would that be appropriate? I'd rather start at six than start at seven and finish at 11. 
if I remember the constitution correctly, we would need to get the chief exec's approval to bring the, which we could, which we could see. We can ask him. <laughs> Make him a cup of tea, he'll be fine. <laughs> Are we sorry? I'm making. I'm not making a decision for the panel. My my suggestion is, is that in order to include it in one night, as suggested by the marching officer, we start the meeting at six o'clock, and if we finish early, so so be it. Um, can I propose that from the chair, Jane? Can I have a seconder, Abby? All those in favour? Is that is that a sea of hands? I can't. Uh, yes, yes. A sea of hands. That's unanimous. So. Thank you. Thank you for everyone's cooperation. Um, do we have any more questions on the forward plan and the annual work plan? There's nothing new, particularly on the last forward plan. There's two new items which were um, pretty straightforward. Um, thank you. Um, item 14, I've not been a, made aware of any urgent business. If there is no urgent business received, Chair. If there is none, the date of the next meeting is Tuesday the 13th of December at 7 p.m. in the Council Chamber. Um, and I close this meeting at circa 9.04. Thank you, everybody, for your time.